level. So we will start at uh, two o'clock. So how are you, Prof Rakesh? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. How are you doing? Ah, fine, good. Uh, Alhamdulillah. So we are just finished our first ses uh, tutorial session. So uh, by Dr. Nasimuddin. So so in eight minutes, I believe. So we will be uh, your session. So where are you now, Prof? In university or? See, I am an Indian Institute of Technology, Gohati. Ah, okay. Okay. So what? it's in India. So it's what uh, what time is that? Uh, in... Now it's going to be 1 30 here. 1 30 or still in the afternoon. All right. So here we are near to four o'clock, so another seven minutes. Uh, while that, Prof, uh, you want to test your slides? Okay. Let me share your slide and see. All right, it seems okay, but uh, maybe you can uh, put it in a, in a slight view. Is it okay now? Okay, it's okay now. All right, so uh, so your affiliation is now at IIT? Yes, I'm in IIT now. I was postdoctoral fellow in Pennsylvania State University around 17 years before. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a long time. So maybe your profile here. Uh, yeah, it does. I think they give option for two, three affiliations, maybe. So probably. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we will um, correct it. Okay. It seems okay. So your your mic is okay. Your slide is okay. So we just uh, wait for uh, around six minutes. So I will uh, start uh, introducing you after this, and then uh, you will have around one hour, 20 minutes. And then after that, uh, maybe we can open about 10 minutes for Q&A. All right. That's fine, that's fine. Okay, so, so we will on around uh, four minutes. I will be back in four minutes. All right, Prof? Okay, fine.
can you unshare your slides because you want to share uh, your profile? Okay. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and good afternoon everybody so, to all participants. So thank you for staying with us. So now we are going for the second session of the tutorial sessions with us now, uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Rakesh Singh, Singh uh, Satri Mayum. Uh, sorry if, if I pronounce it not uh, correct. Uh, it's all right, it's all right. Okay, from IIT. Uh, I, I don't know, it's not Bombay, Bombay. Uh, it's Gauhati. Gauhati, all oh, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sorry for the wrong affiliation there. So maybe because of Prof. Rakesh was, was at Pennsylvania State University uh, before this. All right, so, so today we are very proud to have uh, Prof. Rakesh here to share uh, our second tutorial and title inter antenna interaction and its effects in mimo wireless so before that uh, okay so we will have around one and uh, one hour 20 minutes of uh, talk by prof and then after that we have around 10 minutes for uh, q and a and i hope uh, participants can uh, participate uh, by uh, two ways one is by uh, by uh, writing text in the chat box, or you can uh, raise hand uh, during the Q and A sessions. So for now, uh, let me read uh, the biography of Prof Rakesh. So Prof Rakesh uh, received the bachelor degree in electrical engineering from IIT Bombay, uh, India, in two thousand. Uh, before pursuing uh, his PhD uh, from Nanyang Technology University, Singapore in 2005. So now he is a professor at another IIT uh, just now. Uh, so I forgot uh, uh, anyway, uh, in India. Uh, okay, so he also did uh, his postdoc uh, research at Department of Electrical Engineering, uh, Pencil, Venia State University, USA in 2005. Uh, so his current research interests are in the areas of antennas, RF circuit design, performance analysis for beyond 5G technologies. So he has authored and co-authored many books and more than 130 papers in international journals and conference proceedings. So Dr. Rakesh uh, is currently also an editor of IEEE Communication Letters and an associate editor of IEEE Open Journals of Antennas and Propagation. So he also served as an ed editorial board on the IEEE Translation uh, on Microwave Theory and Techniques and on the program committee of several international conferences, uh, including IEEE Globcon, IEEE 
uh, ICC and APMC. So we, uh, IEEE, Asia Pacific Conference on Applied Electromagnetics, uh, very proud to invite Dr. Rakesh, Prof. Dr. Rakesh Singh Setri Mayum uh, from IAT uh, in, to deliver his speech or talk regarding the title of inter antenna interaction and its effects in MIMO wireless. So the floor is yours, Prof. Uh, thanks a lot, Dr. Jamaluddin, for the brief introduction. I think I can start the talk now. Yes, yes. The floor Thank is you. Here. Okay, so there was some problem with, with the network, so I'm logging from another network. Uh, All right. Okay, so you can continue, Prof. Okay, so the floor is Yeah. Uh, thanks for your patience. Uh, now I can start the presentation. This is another network. Uh, okay, so let's start just starting. I want to acknowledge my students, former and present students. I've already done that. And I also acknowledge my collaborators. Uh, this is Professor Alphonse from NPU Singapore, and this is Professor Karu Isele from University of Technology, Sydney, and this is Professor Sonia Aysa from INRS Montreal, Canada, and this is Professor Sivan Cole from IIT Delhi. So I have collaborated with the, these professors in my work in this talk. Okay, so let's start with the outline of the tutorial. So in this inter antenna interaction and its effect in MIMO wireless, We'll discuss about three things. First is, we'll discuss about those topics in MIMO wireless which will be required for uh, characterizing the performance of MIMO antennas in MIMO wireless communication. We'll discuss about the inter-antenna interaction. We'll also discuss about the performance metrics of MIMO antenna in MIMO wireless communications. Prof, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, maybe you can off your video. Uh, okay. so that the, you can reduce the bandwidth. All right. Okay, thank okay. you very much. Okay, so let us discuss about the introduction to the MIMO wireless communication. So first, in MIMO wireless communication, we actually discuss about two things. One is called diversity gain, another is called rate gain. So these are the two gains which actually makes MIMO wireless really famous. So we'll discuss about these two gains diversity gain and red gain, but then you cannot simultaneously increase diversity gain and red gain. So there's a trade-off between these two. This is called famous diversity multiplexing trade-off. So all the MIMO wireless communications should be designed according to this diversity multiplexing trade-off. Then we'll discuss about the inter-antenna interaction. What are the fundamental parameters we need to use for characterizing inter-antenna interaction? First is mutual coupling. Then we'll discuss about envelope correlation coefficient. Envelope correlation coefficient can be calculated from the scattering parameter as well as from the 3D radiation patterns of the antennas. We'll also discuss about how to calculate antenna correlation coefficient from the envelope correlation. And antenna correlation coefficient can be also calculated from the scattering parameter. So the most important parameter for characterizing the performance of MIMO antenna in MIMO wireless communication is the antenna correlation coefficient. Then in the section three, we'll discuss about the performance characterization of MIMO wireless, uh, MIMO antenna and MIMO wireless communications. Just before that, we'll discuss about the evolution of MIMO. So original MIMO is called single user MIMO, which was proposed somewhere in 1992-1994. Then from there, MIMO has moved on to multi-user MIMO somewhere in 2007. Then from multi-user MIMO is basically employed in 4G wireless communication and uh, from the multi-user MIMO, it has already moved to massive MIMO, which is employed in 5G wireless communication. And there's something called cell free massive MIMO, which is proposed somewhere in 2017. This is actually going to be used in the future 6G wireless communication. This is one of the most uh, important proponent for MIMO wireless communication in the 
beyond 5G or 6G wireless communication. So we'll discuss briefly the evolution of MIMO wireless communication, and we'll actually try to do the performance characterization of MIMO antenna in all this presence of MIMO, MIMO wireless communication. So we'll find the performance metrics of MIMO antennas in single user MIMO, multi-user MIMO, massive MIMO, and the performance characterization of MIMO antenna in cell-free massive MIMO is an open problem. So it has not been reported in the literature. Then we'll discuss in section four, some of the common errors in describing MIMO antenna in terms of scattering parameters, radiation patterns, gain, diversity gain, channel capacity loss, and bulb correlation coefficient and antenna correlation coefficient. Uh, then finally, I'll discuss about what are the futuristic technologies like beyond 5G, 6G wireless communication. What is the MIMO technology which we use in beyond 5G or 6G wireless communication, which is actually cool as cell-free massive MIMO, then what is the technology we should enable this cell-free massive MIMO is something called radio strike networks. This is one of the latest area. I will discuss briefly all these futuristic technologies also in the latter part of the talk. Okay, so let's start with the MIMO wireless communication, the introduction to the MIMO wireless communication. So I will start with this famous quotation, any wireless communication cannot happen without antennas. So antenna is minimum bare necessity for any wireless communication device. You can design wireless communication device without any other device, but you cannot escape antennas. Without antennas, it will not do any kind of wireless communications. So that's why antennas are everywhere. This is a typical base station antenna here. And uh, this is a full duplex antenna we have designed, fabricated, tested in our lab. It can do simultaneous transmission and reception of signals. And uh, this is a DRA array, dielectric resonator antenna array. This white structures look like sugar cubes. These are actually dielectric resonator antenna. There are six of them. We have designed, fabricated, and tested this dielectric resonator antenna array for anti collision vehicle or other applications. So if you're interested in this full duplex antenna, we have our paper in the IET map and uh, about the dielectric resonator antenna. This is our paper in IEEE AWPL. Okay, so let us come back to the traditional wireless communication. In the traditional wireless communication, which is also called as CISO wireless communication. So in the traditional wireless communication, which is also called as single input, single output system. So we have a transmitter and receiver in this slide. So Transmitter is fitted with one antenna and receiver is fitted with another antenna. So this Y-shaped structure is the symbol I will be using for antennas here. So looking at the channel here, the channel has input from one transmitting antenna of the transmitter and it has output to the one receiving antenna of the receiver. So that's why single input, single output system. So how is MIMO wireless communication different from this single input, single output system with the traditional wireless communications? So in the MIMO wireless communication, we have a transmitter fitted with NT number of antennas and receiver fitted with NR number of antennas. So looking at the channel perspective, so we have NT inputs from every transmitting antennas of the transmitter and it outputs signal to NR antennas of the receiver. So we have multiple input, multiple output systems. So this is called MIMO wireless or MIMO communication system. So now CISO employs single antenna at the transmitter and receiver, and MIMO employs multiple antenna as transmitter and receiver. So now, what is the performance metrics for any wireless communication system? It may be MIMO wireless communication system, it may be CISO wireless communication system. So from the Lemens point of view, what do we want in any wireless communication? We want is higher data transfer rate and less array in data transmission. So this is what we want in any wireless communication system higher data transfer rate and less error in data transmission. So then how do we characterize the performance of any wireless communication system, including MIMO system? So there are three performance metrics for any wireless communication system. First is called channel capacity. So channel capacity is a maximum data rate one can transfer over the channel with minimum probability of error. So now, as soon as you're transmitting at a data rate, which is greater than the channel capacity, we are in our case. We, receiver won't be able to decode the message which has been transmitted from the transmitter. So that probability is called probability of outtest or outtest probability. This is the second criteria. First criteria is the 
maximum data rate you can transfer of the channel with minimum probability of error, which is called channel capacity. Second is the outtest probability. Probability of outtest. You are in outtest whenever you are transmitting at a data rate, which is greater than the channel capacity. And the third parameter is called the probability of error. It's the error rate that are error rate, or let's say bit error rate, symbol error rate, or packet error rate. So this is the probability of error. So these are the three performance metrics for any wireless communication system. So in the MIMO wireless communication, we have other things like multiplexing or red gain and diversity gain. So that is what we're going to discuss in the next slide. So this multiplexing or red gain is dependent on the channel capacity, which is the maximum data rate one can transfer over the channel. Diversity gain is also dependent on the error rate in data transmission. We'll discuss briefly in the next slide. So MIMO is famous for two gains we have from the traditional wireless communication. One is called red gain or multiplexing gain. Another is called the diversity gain. What is this red gain? I'll try to elucidate with one simple example here. So we have a three by three MIMO system here, three by three MIMO system here. Three by three MIMO system will have three antennas at the transmitter and three antennas at the receiver. Let's say I want to send 0013 three bits. I can actually simultaneously send one zero zero from antenna one, two, and three. So over one time instant, I can send three bits at a time. So let us consider the same case when we have a CISO system, traditional wireless communication system. In the CISO system, we have one antenna at the transmitter and one antenna at the receiver. We have a single link here. So if you want to send three bits, zero, zero, one, we'll first send one bit, then we'll send zero bit, then we'll send zero bit. So we need three time instant to send three bits for the traditional or CISO wireless communication system. So in a way we are having data transfer rate, which is three times that of the CISO system. So this is called red gain. So this is what we mean by red gain or multiplexing gain of MIMO system. So let us try to analyze this in terms of capacity. I have told you that capacity is the maximum data rate one can transfer of the channel with minimum probability of error. So now for the MIMO wireless communication, we have multiple antennas at the transmitter. So let's say NT is the number of transmitting antenna we have total power of PT, we need to allocate power to each and every one of the antenna. So there are different power allocation schemes. The simplest one is you divide the total power by total number of antennas, P by NT, and give equal power PA to each and every antenna. For this simple power allocation scheme, and when we have an uncorrelated MIMO channel, people has already derived what is the capacity of the MIMO system. Capacity of the MIMO system is actually M times that of the CISO system. This box, portion is the capacity for the CISO system, traditional wireless communication system. Here you can see that there is a term called bandwidth. If you increase the bandwidth, capacity will increase. If you increase the SNR, signal to noise power ratio, if you increase the signal power, we can also increase the capacity. So this box term is for the traditional wireless communication system. What we have here for the MIMO system is M times of the CISO system. So in the MIMO system, we don't need to increase the bandwidth or SNR, but the capacity will increase M times that of the CISO system. What is M? M is the minimum of number of transmitting antennas or number of receiving antennas. So now if we employ more and more antennas at the transmitter and receiver, the capacity is going to increase. And this is possible without increasing the bandwidth and the power in the signal power. So this is a very good thing. We are not increasing the bandwidth. We are not increasing the signal power, but we are having capacity, which is M times that of the CISO system. Let's say you consider the multi-user MIMO, which is employed in 4G. In the 4G, people usually use around 10 antennas. So if we assume that 10 antennas are used, then capacity will be 10 times that of the traditional wireless communication system. So let's say if you consider the 5G MIMO, uh, 5G for massive MIMO, 5G usually use around 100 antennas. In that case, capacity will be 100 times that of the CISO system. So that's why people are using MIMO in 4G, 5G, and even in 6G it will be used because we have a huge enhancement in capacity or data transfer rate in the wireless communication by using this MIMO technology. Okay, so that's about the rate or multiplexing gain. We have another gain which is called diversity gain. So let us try to understand what is this diversity gain in MIMO wireless. So actually these things are required for performance characterizations of MIMO antennas later on. So what is diversity gain of MIMO wireless? Let us try to understand it by using this simple example here. So let us consider a three by three MIMO system. Three by three MIMO system means we have three antennas at the transmitter, three antennas at the receiver. In this case, I want to minimize the probability of error in data transmission. I want to improve the accuracy. In that case, I will send same bits zero from all three antennas. So now this 
zero bit I have sent from antenna one, two, and three of the transmitter can go through different parts. If we have a three by three in my most system, three antennas at the transmitter and three antennas at the receiver, then we'll have nine different parts here. So let's say if any of the part is broken or down, link is down, we don't need to worry because zero bits we have sent from the transmitter will reach to the destination or the receiver from the remaining part. So we can easily decode the message which has been sent from the transmitter. But let's say you consider the traditional wireless communication system, which is called CISO wireless communication system. It has only one link. And if this link is down, if we send message zero bit from the transmitter, receiver won't be able to decode the message. There'll be a lot of errors. So diversity gain actually minimize the probability error in data transmission. It improves the accuracy of the symbols we have transmitted from the transmitter to the receiver. So this is called diversity gain. And this is possible because of the multiple paths we have from the transmitter to receiver by employing multiple antennas at the transmitter and receiver. Okay, so uh, for those who doesn't have any background in the wireless communication, let me try to define what is this probability error. Probability error can be simply defined by using this simple example. Let's say if we are sending five bits and all bits are zeros and at the receiver we decode it as one one triple zero then two bits are in error so the probability error is basically number of bits in error divided by total number of bits sent so it's two by five it's 0.4 that's how we actually calculate probability errors in the Monte Carlo simulation and we already know what is SNR SNR is signal power divided by the noise power so now if we plot this probability error versus SNR curve for MIMO and CISO system, the slope is going to change. This is the probability error versus SNR curve for the MIMO and CISO system. For the CISO system, this is the curve, critical curve, and uh, this is the for the MIMO system. You can see that the slope has been increased. So what is the advantage of this increment in the slope uh, of the probability error versus SNR curve? So if you consider the simple relay fedding channel, which is the most popular wireless fedding channel, the probability error for the CISO traditional wireless communication system is approximately one by SNR. But if you consider for the probability of error for the MIMO system, it is approximately equal to one by SNR to the power diversity gain. And this diversity gain term is always greater than or equal to one. Mm -hmm. So now if we have higher and higher value of this diversity gain, the slope of the probability error versus SNR curve is going to increase for the MIMO system with respect to that of the CISO system. So what is the advantage of that? So the advantage for that is, let us consider simple examples. Let's say I want to find out how much is the probability error for the CISO system and MIMO system for a fixed SNR. Fixed SNR means signal to noise power is fixed. I want to find out how much is the probability error for the CISO system and MIMO system. For the CISO system, it's around 0.5 into 10 to the power minus two, but for the MIMO system, it is around 0.5 into 10 to the power minus five. So we have a significant reduction in the probability error for the same signal to noise power for MIMO system with respect to that of the CISO system because of the increased diversity gain. And another thing is that, let's consider this from the different perspective. Let's say I want to find out how much is the signal to noise power ratio I require for same probability error. Let's say if I have a fixed probability error around, let's say 10, 10 to the power minus four, how much SNR I require for the CISO system is around 27 dB, but for the MIMO system is around 17 dB. So the uh, SNR we require for the MIMO system is uh, much lesser than that of the CISO system. So MIMO is an energy efficient wireless communication and people are trying to use it for green communication also. So now we have discussed about the diversity gain and red gain, but then we cannot simultaneously increase this diversity gain and red gain. There is a trade-off between these two. This is called famous diversity multiplication trade-off where you increase the red gain, then diversity gain has to decrease. So D is equal to NR minus R into NT minus R. So R is the red gain. When we increase red gain, diversity gain will reduce. When we decrease the red gain, diversity gain will increase. So all the MIMO system has to be designed by following this diversity multiplication trade-off. This is actually proposed by researchers from MIT. This is a famous diversity multiplication trade-off. So let's say we take simple example for a five by five MIMO system. So now we have five antennas at the transmitter, five antennas at the receiver. So if we use all the antennas for diversity gain or red gain, other has to become zero. So we have to uh, use it properly. For example, if you use three antennas for the diversity red gain, then 
we'll have a red can of three remaining two antennas we can use for the diversity gain so we'll have four diversity gain and red gain of three so this is the multi diversity multiplication threat of all the mimo system has to be designed taking into account this diversity multiplication threat of if you want to explore about MIMO wireless communication, I have a book on the fundamentals of MIMO wireless communication published by Cambridge University Press. And uh, we also have another MIMO wireless communications over generalized fedding channels by published by CRC Press, co-authored by Dr. Bridges Kumani, my, one of my former students. Okay, so this much wireless communication knowledge, what is diversity gain, what is rate gain is required for characterizing the performance of MIMO antenna in MIMO wireless communication. So now let us come to the antenna perspective. We want to see what is this inter-antenna interaction in MIMO wireless. Okay, so you have standalone antenna. This is a standalone antenna, which is kept somewhere in space. So now this standalone antenna, there is no inter-antenna interaction. There won't be any kind of inter-antenna interaction. Let us say I keep another antenna in a very far away distance antenna two, and it is having radiation pattern like this. So now these two antennas are very far away, so there will be no inter-antenna interaction. So distance between the two antennas, which is also called as inter-element distance, mm -hmm. is another criteria for inter-antenna interaction. We want to find out what are the most three important parameters which will decide the inter-antenna interaction. The first criteria is the inter-element distance, distance between the antenna elements. So now these two antenna will not have any kind of interaction, but let's say I place another antenna in between this antenna one and two, antenna three, and it has a radiation pattern like this. This antenna is oriented in a particular direction and it has a radiation pattern like this. Now your antenna one and three will have a lot of interaction because there's the overlap of the radiation pattern of antenna one and three. So the second thing about the inter-antenna interaction is the orientation of the antenna. Orientation of the antenna plays a significant role in the inter-antenna interaction. Uh, then the, let's say this antenna three has some kind of back lobes. So back lobes, then this antenna three and antenna two will also interacting. So there will be a lot of inter-antenna interaction. So the three parameters for inter-antenna interaction is inter-element distance, orientation, and radiation pattern. Okay, so let us come back to that diversity gain and rate gain for the MIMO wireless communication. So let us try to analyze it in terms of inter antenna interaction. So now you have a three by three MIMO system. We want to have a rate gain. So we'll have parallel transmission of bits from antenna one, two, and three. And all antennas are having radiation pattern like this. There is no overlap between the antenna radiation pattern. So there will be minimum interaction between this. So this is the best situation where you can have simultaneous transmission of bits from antenna one, two, and three, and they're independent of each other. But in real life situation, let us consider the case where this antenna has some kind of cyclops here. So this antenna has cyclops here. In that case, signal you are transmitting from antenna one will reach to antenna two and three. There will be a lot of inter antenna interaction. Even at the receiver also, it will pick up signals from all the uh, signals which has been transmitted from transmitting antenna. So if antenna has a side lobe, there will be a lot of inter antenna interaction. Another case is that, let us assume that uh, this antenna doesn't have a side lobe, but then we're considering a closely packed MIMO antenna. In that case, the distance between the one antenna and another antenna is very less. So there will be overlap of radiation pattern from antenna one, two, and three. There will be a lot of inter antenna interaction. So, inter antenna interaction cannot be avoided, but we can mitigate it. We can actually subside its effect by doing some kind of design techniques, which we'll be discussing later on. Okay, so let us again discuss about the diversity gain. In the diversity gain setting, also, we want all the signals transmitted from antenna one to three to be independent of each other, but that's not possible if you have a very closely packed or let's say closely packed MIMO antenna array or side lobes are there, we have a broader beams, there will be always issue of inter-antenna interference. So what are the parameters which will characterize this inter-antenna interactions? So the first parameter we'll discuss is called mutual coupling. And uh, the second parameter we'll discuss is called envelope correlation coefficient and another is the antenna correlation coefficient. So mutual coupling, if it's less than minus 15 dB, it's acceptable, it's good. And for the envelope correlation coefficient, acceptable value is 0.5, but it is desirable to have lesser and lesser value, less than 0.1 is very good. So if you have, 
consider about the antenna correlation coefficient less than 0.7 is acceptable but desirable is less than 0.1 so we will try to understand these three antenna interaction parameter one is mutual coupling and envelope correlation coefficient and antenna correlation coefficient we actually require this antenna correlation coefficient for performance characterization of mimo antenna in mimo wireless communication okay so let us try to understand the traditional antenna so if you consider traditional simple microchip antenna this is a patch here and this is the port where you are feeding the signal to this microchip antenna so all the traditional antennas usually have single element for radiation and single port so all the traditional antennas are single port single element but look at the mimo antenna this is one mimo antenna you can look at the mimo antenna it has two radiators and it has two ports so it's a two element two port antenna and similarly this is also two element two port antenna so all the mimo antennas are multi port multi element antenna so the performance characterization of mimo antenna is going to be different from the traditional antennas which usually have a single port and single radiator so how do i measure this mutual coupling in the lab so let us try to understand how to measure this mutual coupling in the lab so most of the Parameters, all the parameters we measure at the micro frequency, we use the vector network analyzer. This is the vector network analyzer we have in our lab. So all the network analyzer will have two ports, port one and port two. So now we do not use wires to connect at the micro frequency. We use coaxial cables because wires start to, to radiate. There will be high radiation losses. So we use coaxial cable and connect, uh, replace all the wires at the low frequency using the coaxial cable. So if you want to measure the mutual coupling of this MIMO antenna, this MIMO antenna, what do we do? We actually connect coaxial cable with port one of the network analyzer to the port one of the MIMO antenna and port two of the MIMO antenna with the port two of the network analyzer. Then we send some signals from port one and we try to measure how much signal is received in port two. So that is actually the mutual coupling between port one and two. It's also called as S1 scattering parameter. <clears throat> okay, so network analyzer has two ports, but we want to measure the mutual coupling of, let's say, six port, six element MIMO antenna. This is a six port, six element MIMO antenna we have designed, fabricated, and tested in our lab. And uh, this is the network chamber where we do the measurements. Okay, so how do I measure the mutual coupling for a six port, six element MIMO antenna? So I have a network analyzer with two ports. Let's say I want to measure the mutual coupling between port one and port six. I actually connect coaxial cables from port one of the network analyzer to port one of the MIMO antenna. I also connect port two of the network analyzer to the port six of the MIMO antenna. Then I can measure, I can send some signals from the port one and measure signal received in port two. So this is actually, uh, no. So I send signal from port one and I measure the signal received in port six. This is called S16 or mutual coupling between the port one and six. But one point to be noted is that the port remaining ports, port two, three, four, and five, is open circuited. There will be a lot of, lot of reflection from the port two, three, four, and five. So what do we do? We actually put a match load in port two, port three, and port four, and port five. So we can actually measure the mutual coupling between all the antenna elements or between all the ports by following this technique. Okay, so the parameter we actually use for characterizing inter-antenna interaction is one of the parameter, most important parameter is called envelope correlation coefficient. So this envelope correlation coefficient can be found out from the scattering parameters. So this is a relation between the envelope correlation coefficient between element I and J in terms of scattering parameters. So what you can see here is that in the numerator, we have terms like SIJ and SJI. These are actually mutual coupling between elements I and J. So if we increase this value, then envelope correlation coefficient is going to increase. And in the denominator, we have these terms like SIJ square and SJI square. So if we increase this, then we this is basically one minus of SIJ square or SJI square. So if you increase this, overall denominator term is going to decrease and one by denominator will increase. So effectively, if you want to minimize the envelope correlation coefficient, you should actually minimize the mutual coupling. If mutual coupling increases, envelope correlation coefficient increases. So if you minimize mutual coupling, you can actually minimize the envelope correlation coefficient. 
And the one point to be noted is that this formula for envelope correlation coefficient should be used for highly efficient antenna where efficiency is greater than 90% or so. Most of the antennas we use nowadays, like micro steel antennas, doesn't have this kind of high efficiency. So if you use this formula, it's very convenient. You just find out the scattering parameters, then just plug in the value of scattering parameters and find the envelope correlation coefficient, but it's not very accurate because it's applicable only for highly efficient antenna. There is another way of calculating the envelope correlation coefficient, and this is much more accurate. So inter-antenna interaction is dependent on the radiation pattern of the antenna. We have discussed briefly a uh, few slides before. So envelope correlation coefficient should be actually dependent on the radiation pattern of the antenna. So the envelope correlation coefficient can be calculated from the 3D radiation pattern of antenna element I and J. So EI is the 3D radiation pattern of one excitation of the IR antenna element. EJ is the 3D radiation pattern of one excitation of Z antenna element and omega is a solid angle. So from the 3D radiation pattern of I antenna element and the Z antenna element, we can find out envelope correlation coefficient between antenna I and G. So this is a much more accurate formula and it's logical also. Inter-antenna interaction is dependent on the radiation pattern. And the scattering parameters are port to port parameters. So this would be much more accurate because it's dependent on the radiation pattern. And in the literature, this is the most accurate way of finding the envelope correlation coefficient from the 3D radiation pattern. So once we have the 3D radiation pattern, we can actually find antenna correlation coefficient by taking square root of the envelope correlation coefficient. So that's how people usually find antenna correlation coefficient, which will be actually required for finding the performance matrix of MIMO antenna in MIMO wireless communication network. You can also easily find antenna correlation coefficient from the scattering parameters. Antenna correlation coefficient matrix is equal to identity matrix minus Hermitian uh, scattering parameter Hermitian multiply with the scattering parameter, where I is the identity matrix, S is the scattering parameter. Again, one point to be noted is that this is a very convenient way of finding envelope uh, antenna correlation coefficient, but then from the scattering parameter, but then this is actually derived only for lossless antenna. If you consider any antenna like micro steel antenna, you will have directed losses, it will have metal losses. If you consider, uh, let's say, Dielectric resonator antenna, it will have dielectric losses. So this formula is actually not very useful whenever antenna has some kind of losses. So it's always better to find the antenna correlation coefficient from the envelope correlation coefficient. Okay, so let us try to see what is the effect of antenna arrangement in an antenna array in the antenna correlation coefficient matrix. So let us try to consider some simple typical antenna array configurations and find what is the effect on the antenna correlation coefficient. So antenna correlation coefficient matrix is the most important parameter we'll be using for finding the performance matrix of MIMO antenna and MIMO wireless communication later on. So let us try to see some typical antenna array configuration. Let's say you consider point to point MIMO wireless communication, you have a transmitter, you have a receiver, it's sending signal from the transmitter to receiver. So this antenna here, you can arrange in different configurations. First configuration you can actually think of is equidistant antenna array. For example, you put three antenna identical antenna elements on an equilateral triangle. So now all the antennas are equidistant from each other. So what is the effect of that in the antenna correlation coefficient? That's what we are going to discuss in this following slide. Another thing is that we can put the antenna in a circular array. So what is the antenna correlation coefficient for such kind of antenna configuration? Or you can also put antenna in a linear array. In that case, what is the performance in terms of antenna correlation coefficient? We'll discuss that briefly in the following slides. So let's say if you put antenna in an equilateral triangle on the vertices of equilateral triangle, all these antennas are identical antennas. What kind of antenna correlation coefficient it will have? So let's look at that. For example, in this case, all the diagonal elements will be one because diagonal elements is the, this is self-similarity of antenna one with antenna one. So let's say you want to find self-similarity of antenna one radiation pattern with antenna one, it will be always one. Similarly, this is self-similarity of antenna two with antenna two radiation pattern. So similarly, all the diagonal elements will be one because this is a self-similarity. But of diagonal elements, for example, you want to find the 
correlation between antenna one and two, and you want to find correlation between antenna one and three, since they are equidistant, the distance is same, the element spacing is same. Moreover, we are using identical antenna element oriented in the same direction. The antenna correlation coefficient will be same. So all the off diagonal element will be same here. It will have a value of rho in between zero and one. So this is called equicorrelated antenna correlation coefficient matrix. So antenna configuration actually plays a significant role in finding the antenna correlation coefficient matrix. For example, if you put four antennas in a circular array, so what kind of antenna correlation coefficient matrix it will have? So let's say you want to find antenna correlation coefficient between antenna one and two, antenna one and three, antenna one and four, and let us denote that antenna correlation coefficient is row one, row two, and row three. So we have one along the diagonal elements of diagonal element first row, we have one row one, row two, row three. The next row, you don't have to calculate, you just need to rotate it by one element. Similarly, in X row, you can just rotate it by another element. Uh, then you can keep on doing the rotation. So this is called circular correlated antenna correlation coefficient. This is because of the circular arrangement of the antenna elements in a circle. Similarly, the most popular antenna array, which is called linear array. In that case, let us look at the antenna correlation coefficient with antenna one and one. Antenna one and one will be always one because this is a self correlation. But antenna one and two, the distance, antenna one and three distance is increasing, keeps on increasing. So now when you move further and further away from the antenna one, the antenna correlation coefficient is going to decrease. And we know that this antenna correlation coefficient is a value between zero and one. It's a fraction. So if we take rho, rho square, rho cube, and rho four, this times here, this times here, this times here, this times are going to decrease. So as you go further and further from the antenna element, the antenna correlation coefficient is going to decrease. Then you can similarly fill up all other remaining, depending on the distance. You just find the distance. So if the distance is at a distance of one inter-element spacing, then you just have rho. If you have a distance of two element spacing, it becomes rho squared. Three element spacing, rho cube. Three, four element spacing, rho four. Like that, you can fill up the matrix. So this is called exponential correlated antenna correlation coefficient. So the fundamental question is, we have designed, fabricated, and tested a MIMO antenna. MIMO antenna is definitely part of a MIMO wireless communication system. So do we know the performance of MIMO antenna in the MIMO wireless communication? How do we characterize MIMO antenna's performance in MIMO wireless communication? So that's the fundamental question we will tackle in the next following slides. So let us try to, uh, just before that, let us try to introduce this antenna correlation in an otherwise uncorrelated MIMO channel. So we want to introduce antenna correlation in the channel model. So this is the most popular channel model, which is widely used in MIMO wireless communication. It is called separately correlated MIMO channel model. In this, we actually separate the antenna correlation at the transmitter and receiver. So what is the logic behind it? Let's look at the inter-element spacing between antenna one and two. This is very uh, few distance. We have a very small gap between antenna one and two. Again, similarly for the co-located antenna at the receiver also, the inter-element spacing is very less. But now if you look at the distance between the transmitter and receiver, they are very far away. So the antenna correlation coefficient at the transmitter and receiver can be separated out. And uh, in, this, in this channel model, in the channel, we actually pre-multiply by the antenna correlation coefficient of the receiver and post-multiply by the antenna correlation coefficient of the transmitter. So this channel model is most widely used separately correlated MIMO channel model where antenna correlation has been taken into account in the MIMO channel. So using this channel model, people have already derived capacity. Capacity is one of the most important performance metrics for any wireless communication system, including MIMO wireless. It has been derived in this paper by Sin and Lee. And in this capacity expression, we can actually separate two terms, this box term and this box term. If you look at this box term here, this is actually capacity for the uncorrelated MIMO channel model where there is no antenna correlation. This term here actually contributes from the antenna correlation at the receiver and transmitter. And it has been observed that this determinant of the receiver antenna correlation and transmitter antenna correlation is a value which is always less than or equal to one. You can simply prove it theoretically also. So if you take log of a number which is less than equal to one, it will become a negative number. So 
what people usually define is channel capacity loss by multiplying a negative sign here. So they define something called channel capacity loss, which is minus log two of receiver side antenna correlation determinant of receiver side antenna correlation minus log two of determinant of transmitter side antenna correlation. So one point to be noted here is that when they derive this formula, they have actually assumed that number of transmitting antennas and number of receiving antennas are equal. So if you use this formula, when the number of transmitting antennas and number of receiving antennas are not equal, uh, it's, it's actually completely wrong. Another thing is, so we have discussed about the capacity rate gain, multiplexing gain, or let's say diversity gain. So let us try to find out what is the rate gain for the MIMO antenna. We have already found out how much is the channel capacity loss due to antenna correlation for the MIMO antenna here. So let us try to find out what is the rate gain for MIMO antenna. So if you want to find the rate gain for MIMO antenna, uh, then you have to find the rank of the channel matrix. So this is a channel matrix. It's called separately correlated channel matrix. You can simply use matrix analysis and you can find out that rate gain is bounded by minimum of rank of the receiver side antenna correlation and transmitter side antenna correlation. So this is the rate gain for the MIMO antenna. It is minimum of rank of the antenna correlation coefficient of the transmitter and receiver. So we have defined what is the rate gain for the MIMO antenna. Another thing is that we also want to define diversity gain for the MIMO antenna so that we actually know what is the performance of MIMO antenna in MIMO wireless communication. For Kronecker MIMO channel model, the PR-wise error probability for space-time codes. If you want to find probability error for space-time codes, actually, if you want to minimize the error, then you have to do some kind of space-time coding in the MIMO wireless communication. So when you want to minimize the error, you actually go for space-time codes. So if you are sending code word one and you are detecting code word two, that probability error is called PR-wise error probability. And it is bounded by this long expression here, but we are not, we did not, we do not need to worry about this long expression. We just need to find out the time which is dependent on SNR. You can see that we have a time which is dependent on SNR here, one by SNR to the power R till they are head. So we have discussed briefly, my most system actually gives proto error which is directly proportional to one by SNR to power diversity gain. So if you find out this time here is actually the diversity gain, R head into R till they is the diversity gain. So now what is R hat and R tilde? R hat is the rank of the del del is RTX. RTX is the transmitter side antenna correlation matrix. What is del? Del is the difference of quadrat matrix one, quadrat matrix two, C1 minus C2. <clears throat> and uh, what is R hat? R hat is the rank of the receiver side antenna correlation matrix. So if we know the rank of this and this, we can actually find the diversity gain of the MIMO antenna. So you can simply do that rank of del into del heights, it's actually equal to rank of del. So this is from the matrix analysis. You can also find out rank of del into del h into RTX. It's actually product three matrices. If you want to find out rank of this, it is bounded by minimum of rank of any one of these three metrics. And you know that rank of del into del h is equal to the rank of del. So rank of del comma rank of RTX. So now del was the code word matrix. So if you use full rank space time code, such as allometry space time code or perfect space time code, del will be full rank. So you do not need to worry about this. So it is full rank, it will not be the minimum. Minimum will be from the rank of the RTX, which is the antenna correlation coefficient for the transmitter. So now you can find out diversity gain. Diversity gain is bounded by rank of the antenna correlation coefficient at the transmitter into rank of the antenna correlation coefficient at the receiver. So we have defined three performance metrics for MIMO antenna and MIMO wireless communication, channel capacity low, then diversity gain and rate gain. So let us try to do some case studies and find out what is this rate gain, diversity gain, and the channel capacity loss. Okay, so this is one of the antennas we have designed, MIMO, MIMO antenna array. So this antenna is a very complicated antenna structure. We have this uh, dielectric resonator antennas here, which is actually fed by microstrip line, which are actually uh, connected to annular slot ring resonators here. And the ground plane also we actually modified. It's a partial ground plane. And in between the ground plane, we put the meta grid lines. So because of this meta grid lines, which actually behaves as a single negative metametrial, 
the inter antenna interaction between this closely packed cylindrical directly resonator antennas will be minimized significantly. We'll see that later on. And uh, we have actually two annular ring slots here. One is outer annular ring slot, another is inner annular ring slot. So when we have two of them, we actually see that there is an improvement in the bandwidth of the antenna. And uh, we have to look at the field pattern of this DRA array and the field pattern it's actually exactly same as with, uh, with that of the ICM12 delta modes and we have plotted the field patterns here and we have compared the field patterns reported in this Professor Guha's paper and we are getting similar kind of field pattern and we have used ICM12 delta mode and find out the dimensions of this DRA and uh, dimension I and D was coming almost exactly as that of the ICM12 delta mode. And uh, we see the bandwidth, bandwidth it's dependent on the inner annular ring slot and outer annular ring slot. When we employ one of them, the bandwidth is not so good. When we employ both of them, bandwidth when we employ only outer annular ring slot is 5.7 to 6.25 gigahertz. When we employ uh, inner annular ring slot and outer annular ring slot, we have a huge bandwidth from 5.68 to 6.67 gears. And we also see that the mutual coupling has been reduced significantly when we have both the inner annular ring slot and outer annular ring slots. Mutual coupling has been reduced by around minus 3.6 dB. And uh, we have used a meta grid line. We actually did a parametric study of this meta grid line when we have eight by four grid, seven by five and so on. And we find out that when we use seven by four grid, we have the best performance in terms of impedance matching. And this is the evolution of the design in the ground pen. Usually we have a uniform ground pen. We have first removed some portion of the ground plane, we call it partial ground plane. And after that, we actually put in the meta grid lines. Because of that, we see that the bandwidth has been improved and as well as the mutual coupling has been reduced significantly. Mutual coupling throughout the bandwidth of the antenna from 5.68 to 6.67 years around minus 16 dB. And this is a prefabricated prototype of the antenna. These are the cylindrical DRA here. We have two of them. And this is the partial ground plane with the meta grid lines in the ground plane of the antenna. And this is the radiation pattern. We can see that copolar components and cross polar component, uh, the cross polar component is much lesser than the copolar component in the broadside radiation for the E plane as well as for the ice plane. So we have actually checked the color correlation coefficient and the gain of the antenna and the correlation coefficient is very less, less than 0 0.046. And the gain of the antenna is from 4.18 to 5.3 dBi. So And we have compared our work with the state of the art and uh, we can see that the bandwidth of our antenna is comparable with the reported works in the literature, but the size of the antenna, the size of the antenna is very less, which is around volume of the antenna in terms of lambda, it's highest value of the wavelength, it's around 0 0.0407. And the mutual coupling is acceptable, which is less than minus 15 dB. And uh, if you look at the inter-element spacing of this antenna, our antenna has a very low inter-element spacing, which is around 0 0.091 lambda x. And uh, this is closely packed MIMO antenna arrays. And we have a very small size volume of the antenna as well as the inter-element spacing is very less. Traditionally, all antennas are spaced at a distance of lambda y2, which is around 0.5 lambda. But our antenna is having inter-element spacing of 0 0.091 lambda. And this is our work, which is presented in the IMWS AMP, Suzhou, China, in July 2020. And we actually calculate the performance metrics of this MIMO antenna in terms of channel capacity loss, diversity gain, and multiplexing gain.
So in order to find out this channel capacity load diversity gain and multiplication gain of this MIMO antenna, we can actually find it from the antenna correlation coefficient matrix at the transmitter and receiver. So the envelope correlation coefficient for this antenna is 0 0.04612 the entire bandwidth. So once we have the envelope correlation coefficient, we can actually find the antenna correlation coefficient, which is approximately 0 0.214. And we have seen that inter element spacing is around 0 0.091 lambda h. So we can fill up the matrix. The diagonal times will be 1, of diagonal times will be 0 0.214. Then we can find out the rank of this matrix, the rank of this transmitter side and antenna correlation and receiver side antenna correlation matrix. And it turns out to be 2 and 2. So when we multiply it, diversity gain is 4. So for a two by two MIMO system, the maximum diversity gain we have is four and this MIMO antenna is giving that maximum diversity gain. So this is a very good design. Similarly, if you look at two by two MIMO system, the maximum rate gain we can have is simultaneous transmission of uh, signals from the transmitter to receiver, we can have rate gain of two. And this antenna is giving that rank is equal to minimum rank of RRX and RTX, rank of RRX and RTX is two, two, so minimum is two. So we have a maximum rate gain also for this MIMO antenna. We actually want to see how much is the loss in the standard capacity, loss in the data transmission rate due to antenna correlation at the transmitter and receiver. It can be found out from the channel capacity loss, which is minus log two of RRX, determinant of RRX minus log two of determinant of RTX. And it is calculated to be 0.1727 bits per second per hertz. And this much amount of loss in the data transfer will be happening because of the antenna correlation at the transmitter and receiver. Let us take another example. This is a dual band, dual port MIMO antenna we have designed for 5G applications. So this antenna, if you look at this antenna structure, it has two slots. So we'll have dual band performance because of these two slots. And uh, this antenna are very closely packed. The interelement spacing is very less for this antenna. And because of that, there will be a lot of inter-antenna interaction. So we want to minimize that inter-antenna interaction. We have employed some neutralization lines here. And this neutralization lines will minimize the inter-antenna interaction. We'll see that later on. We have also used a grounded stuff in the ground plane to minimize the mutual coupling between these two elements. And this is the simulated and measured scattering parameter. We can see that this antenna is working for a bandwidth from 2.3 to 2.8 gears and 3.37 to 3.72 gears. That covers 2.4 gears wireless local area networks, LTE 38, LTE 40, LTE 41, and 3.5 gears WiMAX application. And it is the second band actually can be used for 5G application, 3.3 to 3.7 gears. And we can also observe that mutual coupling is less than minus 15 dB, which is acceptable. And we have found out envelope correlation coefficient and gain of this antenna. Envelope correlation coefficient is shown by the red curves here, and gain of the antenna is shown by the black curves here. What we can observe is that for this antenna, envelope correlation coefficient is very less. It's less than 0 0.06211. And the gain of this antenna is 3.66 dBi. So let us try to see the performance characterization of this MIMO antenna in MIMO wireless communication. So in order to do that, we need to find three performance metrics of MIMO antenna. One is channel capacity loss, one is the diversity gain, and one is the rate gain. So if you assume that this same antenna is used at the transmitter and receiver, and we find out the envelope correlation coefficient was very less. It's less than 0 0.6211 throughout the bandwidth from 2.3 to 2.8 gigahertz and 3.37 to 3.72 gigahertz. So now from the envelope correlation coefficient, if we, if we take the square root, we get the antenna correlation coefficient. As I've already told you, this inter-element spacing is very less, 0 0.092 lambda h. Usually inter-element spacing is of the order of lambda by 2 in the traditional MIMO antenna. So we can fill up the matrix. Diagonal times will be one. It's a self-similarity of antenna elements. Of diagonal times, we have already calculated 0.2492. Then once we have this matrix, we can find the rank of this matrix and find out what is the diversity gain and rate gain. So we find out the diversity gain. So for this two by two MIMO system, maximum diversity gain achievable is four. And this antenna is giving that maximum diversity gain. Similarly, 
for this two by two MIMO system, maximum red gain is two, and this MIMO antenna is giving that maximum diversity gain, uh, red gain also. So we calculate the loss in the data transfer rate, which is also called as channel capacity loss by using this formula minus log two of determinant of RRX minus log two of determinant of RTX. And it turns out to be 0.185 bits per second per hertz. So this much data transfer rate will be reduced by employing this MIMO antenna at the transmitter and receiver. So this is our, our another paper which is uh, presented in USI General Assembly in August 2020. Okay, so let us do some metric calculation and see how many antennas we can fit into any mobile phone. So you consider the inter-element spacing. It's a center to center distance between the two antenna elements of a MIMO antenna array. It's called inter-element spacing. So how many antenna which can fit into a mobile phone? For example, if you consider a typical smartphone, So the typical dimension of a smartphone, if you look at the typical dimension of a smartphone, So the typical dimension of a smartphone, if you look at a smartphone, the typical dimension is around 15 centimeter. So now, if you consider GSM mobile phones, GSM mobile phones work at one gears. So GSM mobile phones work at one gears, then if you find how much is the wavelength, lambda y2 will become around 15 centimeter. So 15 centimeter distance between the antenna element is required if you consider traditional MIMO antenna to be fitted into a mobile phone. So now that is not possible because we have a 15 centimeter dimension of the lateral dimension of the smartphone. So it's difficult to fit in two antennas if you're considering GSM mobile phone. But let's say you go for 5G wireless communication. 5G wireless communication has two operating bandwidth, FR1 and FR2. And the 5G new radio frequency range one Actually, it works for sub six gigahertz frequency band. So it's a frequency less than six gigahertz. And 5G NRFR2 works from 24 to around 100 gigahertz. So now if you consider this 5G FR1, then in that case, let's say we consider three gigahertz. In that case, lambda y2 will be around five centimeters. So we can easily fit in more than two antennas. That is when we consider the traditional MIMO antenna array where the interlement spacing is lambda y2. But let's say if you apply mutual reduction techniques and minimize the inter-element spacing between the antenna elements, then you can have more than two antennas if you're considering 5G wireless communication. That is for the FR1. If you go for FR2, then let's say around 30 years, then lambda Y2 is around half centimeter. You can fit more than 15 antennas on a mobile phone. So that's one of the reason why people are going from micro frequency millimeter wave frequency because the form factor or the size of the antenna is reduced significantly. So with this, we can understand that if we go for 5G wireless communication, we can fit in more than one antennas in a mobile phone. So with that in mind, let us try to move from the single user MIMO or point-to-point -point MIMO, which we have been discussing to multi-user MIMO. So in the multi-user MIMO, as the name suggests, it will have many users. So here also in this diagram, you can see that there are K mobile users here. So this K mobile user is served by base station here. So this is called multi-user MIMO, where you have many users here. So now the communication here is a little bit different here. So here, whenever your mobile phone is communicating to the base station, we call this as uplink transmission. And in other case, when base station is transmitting signal to the mobile user, we call it a downlink transmission. So now for different transmission, you'll have different uh, channel capacity and people usually do not call this channel capacity as you know, channel capacity is usually called as sum rate in the multi-user scenario. So for example, you have a uh, rate for this user one, user two, user k, you sum all of them, then what you get is called sum rate. So usually people do not 
consider capacity in the multi-user scenario, what they call capacity is called sum rent. So now correspondingly, we need to define new parameters, performance metrics of MIMO antenna in the MIMO wireless communication for the multi-user scenario. So let us consider a multi-user MIMO system. Here we consider there, so I will call this mobile terminal as radio ports. We have how many radio ports here? We have M of them. So we have M radio ports, M users, so multi-user scenario. And every radio port is fitted with NT antennas. Antenna one, antenna two, up to antenna NT. And we assume that uh, base station is having NR antennas. So, and we are considering the communication for the uplink scenario. And we want to find how much is the sum breadth loss due to antenna correlation at this mobile port. So that is what we're going to do in the next slide. We want to find out how much is the loss in the sum breadth due to antenna correlation at this mobile port. So the channel capacity, which is also called as sum breadth for the multi-user MIMO is already derived in this paper. From there, we actually derive how much is the sum red loss due to antenna correlation at the mobile ports, all, all these M mobile ports here. And it has expression like this, this is expression. And here in this above expression, TR means trace of a matrix. Trace of matrix is some of the diagonal elements of the matrix. M is the number of mobile ports or radio ports or mobile terminals. And NT is the number of transmit antennas for every user. So we assume that every user is fitted with a, using a mobile phone with NT number of antennas. It could be more than one number of antennas. And we have already seen that in 5G wireless communication, we can have more number of antennas in the mobile ports. So NT is the number of antennas in every mobile port. The overall antenna correlation matrix is denoted by RT here. So this RT is the overall correlation matrix of all this mobile port, not for one single mobile port. For all this mobile port combined, we find out how much is the antenna correlation coefficient matrix. So that is your RT here. So using this formula, we can actually find out. So let us try to do some case study, some red loss case study for multi-user MIMO. First case is we'll use the same antenna we have used in the 5G wireless communication. We have done for two by two MIMO system in the single user MIMO. So here we are considering the multi-user MIMO. We're considering three radio ports here, radio port one, radio port two, radio port three. So radio port one, radio port two, and radio port three are fitted with two antennas, which was already used for the single user case. We want to do a comparison study in the performance of multi-user and single user MIMO. And we are actually assuming that this uh, base station is having NR number of antennas and we are considering the uplink scenario. That means mobile ports are sending signal to the base station. So we can actually find out the antenna correlation coefficient matrix and from there using the previous formula we have for the sum red loss, we can calculate how much is the sum red loss. And we calculated for this particular case, sum red loss is 0 0.0001 bits per second per hour. For the single user MIMO, we have considered the general capacity loss was 0 0.0925 bits per second per hertz. So we can see that the loss in the channel capacity or some red is much lesser for the multi-user MIMO. Not only that, let us try to make a performance comparison of single user MIMO, multi-user MIMO and massive MIMO. So the performance metrics are multiplication gain, diversity gain and channel capacity loss or some red loss. So if we compare the multiplexing gain for single user MIMO, it was two. For the multi-user MIMO is six, for the massive MIMO is also six. Usually multi-user MIMO employs NR is equal to 10 at the base station number of receiving antennas. For the massive MIMO, usually typical value is around 100. We have used that. What is the diversity gain? If you look at the diversity gain for a single user MIMO was four. For the multi-user MIMO, it's around 60. Diversity gain for the massive MIMO is even higher, it's 600. So there will be a lot of improvement in the performance of massive MIMO with respect to that of multi-user MIMO and multi-user MIMO with respect to that of the single-user MIMO because of the huge diversity gain we have here. So if you compare the channel capacity loss and some red loss, 
And what we can see is that general capacity loss is 0 0.0925. And for the multi-user MIMO, it's around 0 0.001 bits per second per hertz. For the machine MIMO, it's around 0 0.001 bits per second per hertz. So what you see is multi-user MIMO, massive MIMO, all are multi-user scenario. In the multi-user scenario, the channel capacity loss or some red loss is even lesser. So there's a lot of performance improvements when we go from the set single user MIMO to multi-user MIMO to massive MIMO. So now let us do another case study. In this case study, we are considering multi-user MIMO. It's a 5G wireless communication where you have 5G smartphone. We consider two 5G smartphone one and 5G smartphone two. And we are considering the case of the uplink. And you can see that in this antenna, this is a very recent antenna. In this, we have in the 5G terminal, we have provision for eight antennas. Eight antennas here, eight antennas here. They have designed it systematically and even the envelope correction coefficient for this very compact MIMO antenna for the 5G terminal is very less. So when we calculate the sum red loss, sum red is even lesser, 0 0.00050139. So some red loss is very less for this multi-user MIMO for 5G wireless communication. So let us try to do SRL case study two for this. And uh, when we compare the multiplication gain, multiplication gain for multi-user MIMO and massive MIMO is same, it's 16. And diversity gain for multi-user MIMO is 160, for massive MIMO is 1,600. Some red loss is 0 0.0050139, 0 0.0050139 for the massive MIMO also. So let us try to summarize how to characterize the performance of MIMO antenna in MIMO wireless communication. It's a three-step procedure. First thing is that first step, you find out the envelope correlation coefficient among the antenna elements from the 3D radiation patterns of the antenna, not from the scattering parameters. Second step is you actually calculate the antenna correlation coefficient by taking square root of the envelope correlation coefficient. Then after that, what you can do is you can find the performance matrix of MIMO antenna in MIMO wireless communications. There are many performance metrics for MIMO antenna in the literature, but the performance metrics we're discussing here is exactly in terms of the performance metrics of MIMO wireless communications. So we'll actually calculate diversity gain, multiplication gain, and we can also find out what is channel capacity loss if it is for single user MIMO and some red loss if it is for multi-user MIMO. And the final objective for designing MIMO antenna is you minimize the ECC then you will automatically minimize ACC also. If you minimize envelope correlation coefficient, you can minimize the envelope antenna correlation coefficient. If you minimize antenna correlation coefficient, your diversity gain will be very good. Multiplexing gain will also be very good. You will have high value of diversity gain and multiplexion gain. You will also have minimum value of channel capacity loss and some red loss. Minimum value is always better. Lesser the value of channel capacity loss or some red loss will have lesser reduction in the data transfer rate due to employment of this MIMO antenna in the MIMO wireless communication. Uh, if you, uh, so uh, Dr. Jamaluddin, are you here? Uh, if you allow me, I want to change back to the previous network. Okay. Uh, just give me two minutes. I will change right. the okay, previous okay. minute. Uh, thank you very much. Prof, you want to share something?
Okay, I'm so sorry about the network. It was uh, unexpected. Suddenly it went off. Okay. How much time do I have? It is finished already. So maybe... Okay, so I, I will just take two, three more minutes and discuss about the future futuristic okay. technologies. Okay, okay, please proceed. Uh, Okay, so the question is, what kind of technology will be there in the future network? So for the beyond 5G and 6G technology, there's a proposal which is called cell-free massive MIMO. So in the future, we'll not have any kind of cells. We'll be freed of the concepts of the cells. There were so many inherent problems with the cellular technology in the mobile wireless communications. All those problems will be solved. Another thing is that in the future, our base station antennas we will actually distribute the base station antennas to many access points. So what is the advantage of that? The co-located antennas, if you look at the entire element spacing, it was very less. But when you distribute these antennas over all the access point, diversity gain, macro diversity will be there. We'll have a huge gain in terms of diversity. Another thing is that if you look at any user here, for example, user equipment one here, user will be always surrounded by many access points. So user will send signals to the nearby access point. It will be transferred to the CPU. CPU will do all the signal processing and the CPU is connected with the access point using the front hole networks. So you, in future, what we are actually thinking is that we'll not have any base station, but any geographical area will be surrounded by many access point. And that is the best situation for the user. User will be, will be always served by many access point. So with this concept in mind, let us try to understand which technology will enable us to have this so many access points in the future. So what is the enabling technology in terms of circuit theory or in terms of antenna technology? So this technology is called something called radio stripe networks. So this is a technology which is actually proposed somewhere in 2019. It is actually invented by two scientists and engineers from the Ericsson Sweden, Paul Franger and John Hadron. What they are showing here is that they are showing that all the circuits for the access points in the future, cell-free massive MIMO will be implemented in a very thin layer substrate, just like cellotape. It can be rolled out on any surface. It can be stick on any walls, any surface. So this will be very easy to implement. It will make successful implementation on many access points which will be required for the cell-free massive MIMO. So now how this radio strat network will be implemented? Let us take some scenario here. For example, this is a train station where many passengers are waiting for the next train to come. So every user has a mobile phone and uh, there'll be huge data traffic here. So how all these users will be served with a very good quality service and high data rate in the future is by using this radio strat networks, which are actually printed on the walls, on the rails. So this kind of the radio strap networks will be able to give very good quality of service and high data rate in the future. And similarly in the public transport network also, you can see that every user is having a mobile phone. They are doing something on the mobile phones. There'll be huge data traffic here. So how can we provide very good quality of service and uh, high data rate for every user? So that is possible by using radio strap networks. You can see that there's radio strap networks on the doors, windows, on the walls. So this will actually allow us to implement cell-free massive MIMO in the future. Another example is in the city square, there are many users walking here. Everyone is having a mobile phone. So now how can we implement radio strap networks for cell-free massive MIMO in such kind of scenario? We can actually use the packets of the buildings. So we have radio strap networks on the packets of the buildings. Another thing is in the airport also, we can put radio strap networks on the walls. And even in factory shopping also, we can put radio straps like this. 
And even in auditorium where you have a huge gathering where matches are happening, you can have radio strap networks laid out like this, even in auditorium. This is the auditorium in Indian Institute of Technology, Gauhati. It's always crowded. And uh, to give a very good service to all the users, you can actually put radio strap networks on the walls. As long as everyone is using mobile phones in silent mode, it's not going to have any effect on the proceedings. This is another radio strap networks. This is the main building of administrative building of IIT Gauhati and uh, is hugely crowded many of the times. We can put radio stripes on the walls of the building. Okay, so with this, I will conclude my talk. We have discussed about single user MIMO, multi user MIMO, massive MIMO, self free massive MIMO. We have discussed about the evolution from 4G to 5G to 6G wireless communication. We have defined performance metrics for MIMO antenna and MIMO wireless communication, terms of diversity gain, multiplication gain, channel capacity loss, some red loss. And uh, for the cell phone massive MIMO, we have not defined these parameters because this is an open problem. And uh, these are the references. And that's the end of my talk. And uh, thanks a lot for your patience. And uh, I would be happy to answer any questions. Sipan can raise hand uh, to ask question. Uh, first, uh, before that, uh, I have uh, one question here from the chat box okay. uh, from Dr. Nasimuddin. So what is the standard of mutual coupling for 5G applications? Bro? See, I think uh, that's a very good question. And mutual coupling, if you have below minus 10 dB also, it's good enough. So I have seen that many people are going for mutual coupling below minus 50 dB also. But if you are having mutual coupling below minus 10 dB, that's good enough. But the standard uh, value for the mutual coupling people usually consider is minus 15 dB, but below minus 10 dB is also good enough because too much of mutual coupling reduction is actually not required for the, you know, you know something like 5G wireless communication or let's say 6G wireless communication. And uh, too much is not required, like 60 dB, 50 dB, many people are designing, that's not required. So less than 10 should be good enough. NDB. Okay, so uh, any more question from the floor? Or maybe here we have we are here uh, physical attendance. So Dr. Azza. Uh, hi, hi, Prof. Uh, I have a, a question. Uh, usually when we buy a commercial MIMO antenna, they will not state the mutual coupling in the data sheet, right? But there is a port isolation. Is that the same thing or how? Okay, so port isolation is actually the mutual coupling because as I have discussed in the uh, one of the slides also, how do we measure the mutual coupling? So there we actually find out, you know, how much is the scattering parameter from one port to another port. So that is actually giving you mutual coupling only. And uh, in terms of isolation, it will become positive, I think. And that's the only difference. Okay, any more questions? Uh, we have Prof. Kamal here. Hi, Prof. Uh, just my question is, uh, what actually the optimum values for all the parameters for the MIMO? Because I tried to find out that maybe you can give it the values. Okay. Like for example, what is the diversity gain supposed to be? What is the envelope correction coefficient and okay. others? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Professor. And uh, okay, so I think uh, that that is a very important question also. For example, if we consider the diversity gain, so the maximum diversity gain MIMO will have it will be NR into NT. For example, if we have NR by NT MIMO system, NR antennas at the receiver, NT antennas at the receiver. So the maximum diversity gain should be NR into NT. And if our MIMO antenna is giving that much diversity gain, that is very good. Or for example, if we have uh, in terms of rate gain, so if we have NR by NT MIMO system, maximum rate gain we can have is minimum of NR or NT. That must multiplexing or simultaneous transmission we can do. So if our MIMO antenna is giving that minimum of NR or NT, as a diversity again, that is very good. And the uh, envelope correlation coefficient, acceptable value is 0 0.5, which is actually reported in book uh, by Professor, uh, 
was that. So there is a, uh, okay, so it's already reported in a book, but then now there's people do not design MIMO antenna 4.5 envelope correlation coefficient. If you look at the literature now, there's all the MIMO antenna designs are having envelope correlation coefficient, which is less than 0.1. And I actually suggest that everyone should design envelope correlation coefficient less than 0.1 because envelope correlation coefficient is the most important parameter for, uh, you know, uh, minimizing the inter antenna interaction so that we have best performance from the MIMO antenna and the MIMO wireless communication. So I have covered envelope correlation coefficient, then diversity gain, red gain, and some red loss or capacity, uh, channel capacity loss should be minimum. It's close to zero, then it's best situation. And if it is larger, then it's not good for the MIMO antenna design. Thank you. Any other question, please? So any more question? Prof, uh, I want to ask one question. So besides all the parameters, there are another parameters called M M E G. I mean, yes, yes, yes. M E G is a very interesting parameter. Uh, yes. But I'm not sure you didn't mention anything about this. See, uh, M E G is a very important parameter, which actually take into account the channel effect in the MIMO performance. But then, M E G cannot be used for characterizing the performance of MIMO antenna and MIMO wireless communications. But I understand MEG is a very important parameter because it also take into account the channel effect into the MIMO antenna performance matrix. But then we cannot use that MEG for finding the diversity gain or red gain or channel capacity loss, but it's a very important parameter. I agree, MEG, mean effective gain, right? Okay. So any last question maybe from the floor? Hello, I just want to check uh, Professor Rakesh. Uh, what is the challenging for antenna design for 5G? Uh, the challenge is we need to minimize the size one. So if we want to use for 5G FR1, then we need to say, so let's say if I want to increase the multiplexing gain, I need to increase the number of antenna elements. I want to increase the diversity gain, I need to increase the number of antenna elements. So let's say we have a fixed size and we want to put more and more antenna elements into that mobile phones, then the inter-element spacing will become smaller and smaller. So there will be a lot of inter-antenna interaction. So oh, yeah. we need to have a proper design so that this inter-antenna interaction should be minimized when we increase the number of antenna elements. In the antenna, uh, antenna size can be reduced very, very small, but uh, any other parameter, like uh, if we reduce the antenna size, gain will drop, right? Yes. So any- So I, I, uh, uh, I actually, I'm more concerned in the inter-element spacing. So actually I have one of my PhD students, the first thing I told him is that traditionally antennas are at a distance of, in, a, in, in an antenna array at a distance of lambda by two. So can I make it smaller and smaller distance between these two? So my idea is to minimize the inter-element spacing so that we can minimize the overall size of the MIMO antenna array. So antenna size, let's say I have already taken very small antenna or last antenna. So antenna size is already fixed to me. What I want to minimize is the inter-element spacing. And I still want to have that good performance in terms of mutual coupling or envelope correlation coefficient. That's uh, actually design objective for our research in reducing the size of the MIMO antenna. We are actually not miniaturizing the size of the antenna. We are actually trying to miniaturize the inter-element spacing. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, Prof, maybe the last question uh, yeah. from Irene. There is a limit of the designing number of ports for 5G applications. Okay, so it's a similar kind of question and it's very uh, interesting also. See, if we have more and more number of antenna elements on the same mobile phones, we'll have more or more, um, more improvement in terms of diversity gain and uh, multiplexing gains, which will actually improve the performance of the MIMO wireless communication. But then, as I already told you, when you place this antenna closely one by one, inter-antenna interaction will become higher and higher. So we need to design properly. So the number of antenna elements is not fixed. If we have more and more number of antennas, I have seen in the literature in the IEEE transaction on antennas and propagation, I have seen the early access paper Many of the early access paper, they are actually designing 5G terminal for FR1, sub six gigahertz with, first they started with four antennas. Now they have eight antennas and people are trying to increase more and more. So there's no fixed limit on the number of antennas, but if you put more and more number of antennas, inter-antenna interaction minimization should be done properly so that ECC should be 
at within the acceptable value and we can have a very good performance in the MIMO wireless communication. There is no limit to that. I have seen that from two people has gone to four. Now we have eight antenna element in 5G terminal, even for FR1. I hope I have answered the question. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, uh, Prof, for answering the questions. So now maybe, okay, uh, so before we give the certificate <laughs> online, uh, so hopefully we can have a photo session right now. Okay. Uh, so we ask all participants to on the video. Okay. So hopefully everybody can on their video. Okay. So here we are. Uh, so there are few at at attendants. So attendees physically. Uh, okay. So I'm here. Oh, dah hilang. Okay, thank you. Okay, so thank you. So maybe we can show the certificate of appreciation uh, to Prof. Dr. Rakesh Singh Setri Mayum. Uh, thank you very much. Thank IIT. you. So thank you very much for a very good uh, sharing session for the second tutorial session. Uh, with that, uh, we end our tutorial sessions. And tomorrow we will start uh, for the keynote uh, speech uh, at nine o'clock, uh, inshallah. Again, thank you very much. Uh